When I first heard about the term log4j, the first thing I did was Google it. I had no clue what it was, so I Googled it, and of course, the thing that came up were all the headlines. The worst time to Google for something like that. Nonetheless, we're about a week after the incident, and everything is sort of being patched. Things are being actively fixed as we speak, and so I thought I'd do a little bit of a deep dive into actually understanding what log4j actually is, and um, what is open source software doing inside of Tableau, and more importantly, this is maybe highlighted a blind spot I think I've personally had with open source software being used in tools that we use every single day. Let's get stuck in. Log4j is an open source utility used for logging in a Java environment. Okay, let's just break that down because for most people that made zero sense. Let's work backwards. Java is a programming language used to develop software. Now, when you develop software in a community of people, essentially you find that the same set of developers are doing the same sort of things. Let's say I wanted to make a music app. Um, every single music app has to play music. So instead of hundreds of developers writing the code to play music, I might decide to write that code in such a way that other people can use it, a bit like a template. Let's just call those libraries in this instance. And so in this particular case, log4j is a library that allows other programmers to take advantage of the logging capabilities in Java. Now, writing logs is pretty normal. In all software, essentially when a developer writes a program, sometimes they need to be able to look at issues in their software. And so what they do is they leave themselves opportunities to write um, verbose text to a particular file so that if something goes wrong, they can look at those files and figure out what's going wrong. Tableau server does this um, to create logs for admin so they can understand what's going wrong with their server. Tableau desktop, if you've ever had to get in touch with support, they sometimes ask you to create logs and then send it into them so they can look at a very granular level what is going wrong and what's happening. In this particular case, log4j is just helping with this process and it's specifically a part of Apache. Well, some of you are probably now asking, what the hell has Apache got to do with it? I thought we were talking about log4j and this is about Tableau. So why have we got a third piece of software in this mix? Well, Apache is an open source piece of software that's typically integrated into lots of applications to help them do various things, especially around web communications. But in essence, Apache log4j is actually where this library comes from. And the issue here is that Apache itself is written in Java. And Java is, of course, where this issue exists. Now, if you look around the documentation, you'll see that Tableau referred to this as Apache log4j2. So I've explained what log4j is. Log4j2 is just version two of log4j. Essentially, this was a new version of log4j that was introduced to make things a little bit easier. Think of it as um, uh, like the new version of an iPhone. Essentially, there's version one, then there's version two. That's all it really means. The reason that two is important is because these vulnerabilities actually started in version 2.15. So the full sort of version that this issue originated from was log4j2.15. And this is actually where the vulnerabilities started from. And that's correct. I'm saying vulnerabilities because there wasn't just one. Essentially, typically when these vulnerabilities are found, they are very quickly patched, but then it becomes an arms race between the people who develop the software and the code and the library versus hackers who are now out there finding new vulnerabilities. And as these are found, they're also then quickly fixed. So um, there are multiple vulnerabilities and I wouldn't expect these to be the last set of vulnerabilities that you find as they patch this and as the world turns attention to this particular library, poor people who work on this library, um, more and more vulnerabilities will inevitably be found to do various things and they'll be coming out with patches as those come out. So that's something to expect. Okay, so now we understand what log4j is, we understand why Tableau is using it. The next thing to understand is, what is this vulnerability and why is it so serious? Well, in essence, the vulnerability originates from a particular capability in Java called a JNDI. I have to read the acronym here. It stands for Java Naming and Directory Interface. In a nutshell, it turns out this feature was added to make working with logs a little bit easier, but unfortunately it left a massive gaping hole in terms of vulnerability. Essentially, someone can run remote code execution, this is nicknamed RCE, uh, on your machine without even having to have access to your machine because of the way this feature works with logs. It's very similar to a SQL injection, which you might already be familiar with if you're a web developer or you've worked with databases in the past. Now, the fixes are out there, so I'll urge you to please, please just take this seriously. This affects every version of Tableau, and it doesn't just affect Tableau. It affects any piece of software that's using 
this particular library. And the problem is, is this library in itself is part of other tools. And so you might not even think that your application is using this, but you just have to go and check and make sure, uh, look at all the advice, research all the applications on your machine, on your servers, and make sure that they've patched this particular vulnerability. Check out my video on that, that I released just a few days ago. Now we're not done yet because there's a whole bunch of numbers and names and nicknames that are thrown around. Tableau themselves keep referring to this uh, particular naming structure for these vulnerabilities, which goes a little something like this. I have to read this out again because there's just so many of them. CVE 2021-44228. That's one of these vulnerabilities. And the next one is CVE 2021-45046. What are all these numbers? What do they all mean? Well, I had a little bit of a digging around and I, I found the answer. It's, it's, it sounds complex, more complex than it ought to be. Let's break this down in very simple steps. The way to think of this is they're essentially identifiers in a database. It's like an order ID in Superstore Sales. CVE stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. That's essentially all it stands for. The 2021 simply stands for the year. So that's 2021, the year we're, we're currently in. And the final number, the 44228, is essentially just a code. It just refers to this particular vulnerability. And so if you go and click on the links that Tableau have linked to, it takes you to a page which tells you more about this vulnerability, its risk factors, its score, and other factors that you should be aware of. All this information is stored at the National Vulnerability Database. I'll have a link to that in the description. In there, they have a list of vulnerabilities that have been recognized. Uh, now, this looks like an American website, but I'm sure these vulnerabilities are shared worldwide so whatever is going on here is probably watched worldwide because software is, is developed uh, in one place but it applies to everyone uh, equally. Now there's something called the base score which is also known as a CVS score. This stands for Common Vulnerability Scoring System and the scoring here is essentially just telling you how serious this risk is and this particular vulnerability got a 10 out of 10. That essentially means in terms of its impact and its severity it scored full marks which is not a good thing. If you head to the website again and go to the specific vulnerability and click on the score, it actually breaks down all the individual components. And if you're a nerd like me, hover over those individual score items and it actually tells you what risk factors are involved with each of those contributing factors for the overall score. There's actually a formula that drives that. Okay, so now that we know what it is, we know the impact and we know the severity, what happens next? Well, let me break this down into three perspectives. The first one is people like you and me and the companies we work for. In essence, we're now in an arms race. Uh, we're in this arms race to fix and patch this problem because when an exploit like this goes worldwide, essentially there are people out there that are called black hat hackers. Black hat hackers are the bad kind of hackers are out there trying to make the most of this exploit. So it's absolutely vital that organizations, people, take advantage of the resources being put out there to make sure you patch this issue. Companies like Cloudflare are trying to do it at a network level. Your system admins internally in your organizations are doing it on premise with all the internal software so that someone doesn't take advantage of this exploit. But in essence, this is an arms race. But the thing to note here is that this exploit has existed since 2013 when this feature was first introduced into this library. So the other thing you've got to ask yourself is, how many times has this exploit been taken advantage of before it actually hit the mainstream media? Did the person who found out about it first take advantage of that exploit before they shared it with the world and have other people figured it out and not just said anything? These are the kind of vulnerabilities that really send shockwaves and make you realize that working with open source software is not necessarily dangerous. I think it's a perfectly fine practice, but we really need to start taking and making sure we're aware what's in our software and what's actually being done to support those projects to make sure that they're not exposed to vulnerabilities like this particular one. Now, as a customer of Tableau, this is probably the first time where an issue with open source software sort of reared its ugly head inside of our community in such a big way that we've all noticed. We don't know how many times in the past vulnerabilities have been found that just haven't made the mainstream media. We just have to assume that that must have happened at least once. For everything you hear in the media, there's always a story that goes unreported, and that's just something we all know. And so you have to ask yourself, um, how do we know about these vulnerabilities when they are fixed? 
Um, is there a record of these fixes as they're done? So we're actually aware that Tableau is on top of this. I'm sure the Tableau security team do keep a track of this. Um, and lastly, I, I bet you that Tableau Online is looking sort of attractive to some server admins right now because um, server admins were kind of forced into a really dark corner. I say dark, not in a bad way, but dark in a very sort of stressful way because just a few months ago, we had the end of support for certain versions of Tableau. And those versions of Tableau were not patched in this recent fix for this particular issue. So a lot of people have gone through, sort of jumped hoops to get their upgrade cycles done in time. But however, that's sort of been a kicker because then they've now had to do security patches almost immediately after. And for some organizations, upgrades are one thing, but even just doing a small patch over a weekend is not a straightforward thing. So. A lot of organizations just took their server down and they've been without servers because they're obviously aware of this vulnerability and they don't want to be exposed to it, especially if you're working at you know, a really large company that would be an easy target for a hack like this. Now, as I've said before, the practice of using open source software is not a bad one. If you open up Spotify and go look at the third party list under the help button, you'll see that they use a bunch of applications that are used and Spotify and Tableau, they're completely different applications. But I'm just highlighting that this practice isn't something that's rare, it's actually quite common. The downside is when large companies are using it and taking advantage of open source software, but not putting something back into it to make them safer and secure. So what I really hope that comes out of all of this is two things. Number one, uh, companies like Tableau really step up and sort of step up to the moral responsibility of helping out these libraries that they do depend on that run the sort of the core of their products and make sure that those projects are resourced to stay safe, stay secure and make sure they're well maintained. If no one maintains them, they become a vulnerability vector. And if they become a vulnerability vector, then we're all doing what we've been doing for the last two weeks. It's not ideal. The second thing, which I'm not sort of too familiar with, and I think is a huge blind spot that I've had personally, maybe you'll share in this uh, emotion with me, and that is I actually don't have a good understanding of what open source libraries and technologies are being used in Tableau. Because the thing you have to understand is that each and every one of those open source libraries in themselves also have dependencies that are based on other things. And so when you build software and you use a library like Apache, and then the Apache itself is using another library called Log4j, and Log4j is written in Java, you have this incredible matrix of dependencies. And you need to really understand that for every single dependency in your software. And although Tableau build Tableau, and we expect them to do that really well, I don't think I've ever really questioned Tableau on what are the open source software they're using? And how do we know that they're keeping track of all the vulnerabilities that are available in that? Now, it's obviously Tableau's security team job to do this. And if they advertise these vulnerabilities, that doesn't help them either. But what I would love to do is just have a list of open source dependencies that Tableau uses in a very sort of transparent and neutral way. One that celebrates those particular capabilities, but also one that lets me know what open source technologies I need to be tracking to make sure that I include them in my sort of threat matrix of issues that are going on with security, if, if that makes sense. So I've actually asked the question on the Tableau forums. I've put a link to it in the comments below. So go ahead, go to that question. I'd really love the discussion to take place in the Tableau forums rather than here. And yeah, hopefully this video has been useful to try and explain what Log4j is. Check out my previous video to find out what to do to fix Log4j in the context of Tableau. And lastly, if you found this video useful, then do the nice thing, hit the like button, hit subscribe. One of those two would be great. If you don't do either of that, your viewership is more than appreciated. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.